We're recording. Right. Alex. Right. So, question then. Show that the derivative with respect to y of y and then 2y minus y is the natural log of 2y. So, what we're going to do is differentiate with respect to y. What was it? Y and 2y. Right. Um, the first bit of this, Dan, is just a product, isn't it? It's y times the natural log of 2y. So as we differentiate that, we're going to do the first, remember the product rule, um, the first times the derivative of the second. Now this is easy to make a mistake on this. If you differentiate the natural log of something, you get 1 over the something. But of course we'd also have to, we'd have to multiply by the derivative of the something. So we get 2 over 2y. So we get 2 over 2y is that derivative. That's the first part of the product rule. So it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Differentiate y and you just get 1. And then we're going to differentiate minus y. That's the product <coughs> rule bit done. Differentiate minus y and you get minus 1. Um, notice we, we may remember this is way back in June when we first started doing core 3 stuff. One of the things that hopefully you wrote down as a rule was that if y equals the natural log of um, a times x, and you differentiate that, dy by dx is just 1 over x. And we remember that as a, as a, as a rule of way back, because it will always be a over ax, and the a will cancel out. So whatever that constant is, it will always cancel out and leave us with just 1 over x. So having done that, having remembered that, it now drops out quite nicely. The 2's will cancel, the, uh, the y's will cancel. We've got 1 plus natural log of 2y minus 1. So of course that is just natural log of 2y. And that's what it said it was going to be. So that was, that was the first three marks. Then we have this Bonnie's Revolution question to do. Um, and part two had an awful lot of words, an awful lot of things going on with it. Um, the diagram shows the curve. The point there um, lies on the curve. The shaded region is bounded by the curve of the lines x equals 0 and y equals um, half e to the 4. So it's that horizontal line there. And find the exact volume of the solid produced when it's rotated completely about the y axis. So it's that direction of of uh, volume of revolution that we're dealing with. To do that, we need to know the limits of the, the area. The upper limit, the upper y value, is a half e to the 4. The lower limit, <coughs> well that is the value when, on that curve, that's the value when x is 0, isn't it? So we're dealing with the curve y equals a half e to the x squared. It's not right to do it anymore. And we want to do that when x equals 0. So if x equals 0, sub 0 into that, a half e to the 0 would be half times 1. So y is a half. So that value down there is at y equals a half. So that's our lower limit of our integral. And it's, this is... Um, a volume around the y-axis, and we know that when we're doing an integral against the y-axis, the volume is pi times the integral of x squared dy, and we're going, we just said, from a half up to a half e to the 4, is that what we just said? Yes. So that's, that's the area that we want. Right. Well, hang on, let's think back to the curve that we've got. The curve is y equals a half e to the x squared. I want, to, I want to integrate x squared with respect to y. So I need to rearrange this until I find out what x squared is. 2y is e to the x squared. So the natural log of 2y is x squared. There are all sorts of signposts in the question that you're going this way because of what you've just done in part one. So, 
we've now got that our volume is pi times the integral of x squared, which is the natural log of 2y, between a half and a half e to the 4, with respect to y. Now, integrating, a, integrating ln 2y, well, well, actually, I mean, at first glance, that, that was pretty difficult, isn't it? Because we've not done any integration of natural logs yet. Except, in part one of this question, we differentiated something to get that answer. And integration is just the reverse of that process. So if we differentiate it to get that, when we integrate it, the answer is what we must have started the question with right at the start of part one, which was y times the natural log of 2y minus y. That was the point of doing the thing at the very beginning. So we could un undo it at that point. So now we just need to put in the values and simplify this. So this is pi times what we're going to have here. Um, half e to the 4 times the natural log of e to the 4 minus a half e to the 4. That's putting a half e to the 4 into it. And we're also going to put in a half. So take away a half times the natural log of 1 minus a half. And we're on the home stretch with this now because uh, everything's going to become a little bit simpler in a moment. We've got pi times, well, the natural log of e to the 4, 4 would come down to the front, that's 4 times the natural log of e, so that's just 4, times a half is 2, so that is 2 e to the 4. We're taking away a half e to the 4. Out of this lot here, natural log of 1 is 0, isn't it? So that's a half times 0, take away a half, so we've got minus, minus a half, so plus a half. And, and that would probably be just about enough. What have we got? We've got 2 e to the 4, take away a half e to the 4, so 3 over 2 e to the 4 plus a half. That's, that's a good enough answer if you really want to make it look that bit nicer. It's pi up to 3 to the 4 plus 1. And there we go. Now, um, the, the last part of this question, part, part 3. Shh. Part 3 says, hence find the volume produced when the region bounded by the curve and the lines x equals 0, x equals 2, and y equals 0 is rotated completely about the y axis. So we're still talking about a y axis rotation here. We're now saying that we're going to take, is that alright? We're now saying that we're going to take this. The, the solid created by that line dropping down there, the line at x equals 2, and rotate all of that. Now, if you rotate that region, um, if you rotate oops, that region, that rectangle, around the y-axis, it would create a cylinder, wouldn't it? So you would have a cylinder. Now, what we actually want is um, the volume created by rotating that bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the cylinder, find the volume of the cylinder, and subtract the bit that fits in the middle of it that we've just found. And that's going to leave us with our answer. Does that make sense? That they want this red shaded bit when that's rotated round, but we can't find that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the whole of the cylinder, and then we're going to subtract the bit that we found in part two, and that will leave us with that bit. Okay? Imagine we're creating a, a cylinder and then we're hollowing out the bit that we don't want to leave us with the shape that we're actually after. So, our answer is going to be... Um, I'm going to go with this our answer is going to be... Part three, we're going to do the volume of the cylinder and we're going to subtract from that the answer to part two. 
that's not a particularly sophisticated way of writing it, but that's what we're going to do. Now, a cylinder, we know the volume of the cylinder, it is what? No idea. No idea. Pi R squared H, okay. So the volume of a cylinder. Pi R squared times H. And all of that is given for us in this diagram because the radius is that distance. Now we've just said that that is 2. The height of that cylinder is the y coordinate there, so it's a half e to the 4. So when we put that all together, that is pi times the radius squared times the height, which was a half e to the 4. Take away our answer to the previous part, which hopefully we got that right. It was pi over 2, 3 to the 4 plus 1. And there we are. We just need to tidy this up now. This is 4 times the half would be 2. So that's 2 pi e to the 4. We're taking away, well let's un unwrap this bracket a little bit now, we're taking away 3 pi by 2 e to the 4, and we're also taking away pi by 2. That's quite nice the way that that's ended up. We've got 2 pi e to the 4 take away 1.5 pi e to the 4, so we've got a half pi e to the 4 take away a half of pi. And so that is the nicest way of writing an answer. Pi by 2 e to the 4 minus 1. And that um, is, is a wrap. <laughs>